I saw my little thing, by the way, and I had one in my, in my, my briefcase. So I want to talk to you today about Jesus, the 12, the 70 of the church. Yeah. Jesus, the 12, the 70 and the church. Hallelujah. So if you follow, follow along with me, turn in your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4. And before we get started, let me just pray. Yeah. Amen. Father, I thank you, Lord. I am submitted. I'm so full of your Holy Ghost right now, Lord. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, I pray right now. Let every heart be receptive to hear what you want to say to the church this morning. And God, that you would move in your mighty, glorious power. Yes. And Lord, at the end of this service, Lord, we will that you have your way. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, in Matthew, let me get my spectacles out. How many of you got spectacles? <laughs> I got some reading kind. But I got the kind of that you can keep on your face without taking them off. There you go. Romans chapter, Matthew chapter 4. And I'm just going to show you a few things. First of all, you got to realize that Jesus went about preaching the gospel and teaching the gospel. Now, a lot of people just preach. But you, to make a disciple, you got to teach. So you got to teach. The, so Jesus went out and taught, uh, taught and preached the kingdom of God. But not only that, but he healed the sick, he cleansed the lepers, he raised the dead. Didn't he do that? Amen. So look at me, uh, Matthew 4, 24. Just going to give you a little piece of this, like a little bio of Jesus. It says that Jesus went about in all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Now, how, how, much did, how many people did he heal? All. Oh. All manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So, was there something that he didn't heal? No, all is all. All, all is all. You know, there's a couple of words in Christianity that Christians have trouble with. One of them is all. <laughs> yeah, I believe mean, yeah, all things are possible. Yeah, but so no, you just negated that, so you don't believe. So anyway, so he did that. Now, now watch. Something else, Matthew chapter 9, it says the same thing again. So you must have been doing this more than this one time. And it says that Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the kingdom of the, uh, and the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Is Jesus dead? No. no. He's alive. Yes. Okay, now watch this. If Jesus was to come into the room right now, how many people in here need a touch from God? Now, literally, in life? Okay, I expect to see all of you all up here in the inner service. <laughs> For Jesus to touch you. Amen. So, if you believe that Jesus is alive, okay, so it means he's not dead. He's just not here, like in person. But if you were in person, and if he touched you, or if he spoke to you, do you think you would be healed? Yes. yes. Amen. Yes. Yeah? You believe that? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to get you in trouble because it's a setup. All right. Now. All right? So you believe that if Jesus was in the house and he touched you, you'd be healed? Yes. How many of you are born again? Amen. Yes. Where's Jesus? Amen. He's in the Amen. house. Amen. Hallelujah. See? Our belief system must be challenged. Yes. You can't just believe that he's there. you got to believe he's here. Yes. Yes. If you don't believe he's here, then you're going to the cross every time you come to God. <clears throat> Why don't you just get it settled? Go to the cross and get it settled once and for all. Be born again and be a child of God and live like one. Yes. And trust that what Christ did at Calvary is enough for you. Yes. That every promise in the book is mine. Amen. Yes. We are partakers of his divine nature through these precious promises, man. Mm. Hallelujah. You get it? <coughs> now, did, how many of y'all wear still toes? I forgot to mention that, dude. I'm going to step on your toes. And I mean it. <laughs> I will. Because uh, I stepped on mine plenty. And uh, if my toes are bruised, so are yours. Now, are you ready for some challenge? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. 
So Jesus was going around preaching in the kingdom, right? How many of you remember, you know, like he'd go out and, and then all of a sudden all these people, like the throng of people would just come at him, right? Everywhere Jesus went, he drew a crowd. The multitudes would come. And they'd bring all their sick, and he had to sit there and pray with them all, and they all got healed. Yes. Right? It's amazing. But if you turn to the tenth chapter of Matthew, Matthew chapter 10, I want you to see something here. In Matthew chapter 10, well, actually, I'm going to chapter 9, at the end of chapter 9, verse 37. He says, listen, guys. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. So he's out here healing all the people, and he's doing all these great works, signs, and wonders, and miracles. And he says, hey, look, listen, look how many people need help. Look at the fields that are white and ready in the harvest. But there's nobody working but me. There's only one doing it. So then watch what he does. He calls his 12 disciples together. And then he tells them, go into the way of the Gentiles. They go not into the way of the Gentiles. And this is verse uh, 5. Because you put it up there. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. And at the end he said the Samaritans and you not. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach. What? So as you do what? Go. As you what? Go. Go. That's the movement, right? That's right. So as you go, he said, I'm not going, you're going. That's right. So as you go, what? Preach. 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 Isn't that something? Yes. Preach. So you go and you preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So is it coming or is it here? It's here. It's here. It's here. Oh, I wonder. It's here. Some people wonder about that, right? I wonder about that sometimes. Looking at the church, I don't know where Maybe the church just don't know he's here. Amen. Heal the sick. That sounds like a command. Cleanse the lepers. Sounds like a command. Raise the dead. Sounds like a command. Cast out devils. Sounds like a command. Freely you have received. Freely give. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, put yourself in these boys' shoes. Or their sandals. <coughs> They're sitting there going, hey, that sounds good. Wait, 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 what, what? You want us to do what? Heal the sick. Well, we can't heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Are you serious? We just, y'all remember how he did that? No, I don't remember how he did it. You remember? No, I don't remember what he did. I think he just said something and he touched them, I guess. I don't know. Why does he want us to go cleanse the lepers, man? Then he says he's going to raise the dead. I know he didn't just say that. <laughs> Jesus, man, dude, you need to eat something that's fasting too long. You told me about us raising the dead. Look, man, we just know how to catch fish and stuff. And look at Matthew. Man, the dude's a tax collector. He don't know how to raise the dead. He just makes people dead. <laughs> so, they got an issue. How do we do it? How do we do it? But watch. Did they go and do it? Yes. Yes, yes they did. <coughs> so they went out and they did what Jesus said to do. And when they went, he showed up, right? The power was there. Now watch. I want to go a little bit further. I want you to see something. And uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh. Ooh, I want to go there, but no, I don't. That's going to take us a, that's a rabbit trail you don't want me to take. <laughs> oh, I might just go there. Yeah. Have your way over here. Okay. Verse 24. Well, no, let me go to verse 10. Uh, no, I'm gonna, let me go before I go to verse 24. Let me sit you here first. Uh, when he sends them out, he tells them, 
not to, to trust in the ways of man, in the, the ways of the world. In other words, when you go out there, don't, don't try to get money. Don't, don't ask people for money. Don't, don't try to do something to try to make things better for yourself. Don't try. Just go. Just go and do what I said. So when they went out and they did what he said, it worked for them, okay? Yes. And then he tells them, you know, he gives a little dissertation a little bit later on. He said, but when they deliver you, take no thought of how what you're going to say, whatever else. And I was like, he's talking about some, some persecution here. But then he says this, watch. <clears throat> oh, boy. You sure you want to go here, Lord? <laughs> yes. Verse 24. The disciple is not above his master. Nor the servant above his Lord. <clears throat> it is not enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his Lord. Now watch. You gotta understand this. If they were gonna persecute Jesus, they were gonna persecute them. But the world was. Not only that, but if it was going to be where devils were, were gonna be present and, and Pharisees were gonna be present and people are gonna be watching what you do and being critical of everything you do. If they did it to Jesus, they're going to do it to you. Yes. Right. Not only that, but he says, listen, if they did it to me, they're going to do it to you. Right. But so don't worry about it. You're my disciple. You're not greater than me. So don't ever go out into the world and wonder why the world's treating you bad when they treated you worse. Yes. That's right. Okay, it's not going to be easy for you. Quit asking God to make it easy for you. He ain't going to do that. That's right. See, because when it's really difficult and when it's really, really hard and when the persecution is strong, that's when Jesus shows up yes. and makes everything work out right. Hallelujah. That's when powerful miracles and signs and wonders happen. Amen. Not when everything's up your door. That's right. It's when you're right in the midst of it. Right when you show up and there's a devil coming in the room. And you've got to cast it out. And it don't want to go. <laughs> hmm. And it's causing a scene. You can't wait to get filled in the Holy Ghost then. You better be filled with the Holy Ghost before. Yeah. Yeah. So you better get ready. And be ready. So when the thing shows up, it goes, hey, hey. And then you show up and say, what are you doing in here? Oh my God, he's a believer. <laughs> <laughs> he's not one of them phonies hooking at them now. I can't do nothing but go. Or shut up and make him think I'm gone. Yes. <laughs> and either way, I'm going to keep on going until you don't know you're out. Yes. So anyhow, now watch. Now, he gave them power over all the power of the enemy. <coughs> Is that what he said? Yes. Now watch, I want you to go to Luke chapter 10. Now... And I'm going to go, you're going to go to 10, and I'm going to go to 9. So we know that, that Jesus sent out the 12. Luke chapter 9, at the beginning, tells us the same thing, that he sent out the 12. And watch, I like what he says in Luke 9. He said, then he called his 12 disciples together, gave them power and authority over all devils. And to cure diseases. And that's something. Watch what verse 2 says. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. Now, I need a glass catcher right here. Matt. So, he sent them with power over all devils. And the cure sicknesses and diseases. And he sent them to preach the gospel. <coughs> we just want to preach the gospel and we say that you can't you can't heal the sick and cleanse the living and raise the dead. That's not for us, you know. That's not for us, man. That's it for Jesus to do. That's just something God did back then. But notice, he does not, he, he, he keeps the healing of the sick. And the deliverance along with the gospel. Yes. Yes. That's part of the package. Amen. Like you don't want to preach the gospel without healing the sick and cleansing the lepers. Amen. Listen, I don't know how many 
many people that you know that were that died from some sort of sickness or disease and they are in pain all the time and you're going to sit them talk to them about peace and joy why don't you alleviate the pain? Why don't you set them free from that sickness and disease and then preach them the kingdom? Yes. Yes, right. Yeah? What about setting them free first and then saying, you know why you set free? Jesus. Yes. You know, there was a fellow who was in Walmart. That's a, I go to Walmart a lot. Walmart is good. That's a, that's a good fishing hole, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of sick people in the pharmacy area. <laughs> you know, everybody, if they're not getting drugs, then they're getting bandages. So, or, or something else like that, you know. So anyway, or, or they're getting something that they probably shouldn't be getting for some immorality kind of thing. You can, so you got just a spectrum of things you can minister. So, as you, I was in Walmart, and this fella had this little cast on his arm, or a sling, and had his arm wrapped in a bandage and had it in a sling. And him and his wife, they were, they came in, and I saw him, because I saw the sling. And I'm like, hurt dude, needs prayer, this is an opportunity, come on Jesus, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm hunting down, so I'm a hunter. I'm a nappe, man. I'm a nappe. You're a nappe, man. So I'm like, I'm stalking him. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And so he, so I see him go down the pet section. Then I'm like, dude, I got you now, bro. I got you so I warmed up. And I'm sitting there and I'm like behind him watching like this. And you know, him and his him and his wife are sitting there looking for some kind of little thing. And I'm like, how how can I talk to this dude? So then I said, hey man, uh, what happened to your arm? And then he says, oh, I broke it. I said, how'd you break it? He says, I'm a jockey. I said, really? I was wondering why you was kind of small. You know, I didn't say that to him. I was thinking, my mind, he's a little big dude. I said, uh, yeah, wow. I used to have a neighbor that was a jockey one time, and I guess he still is. I don't know. I haven't seen him in a while. So how did you break it? I don't know what happened. He said, I had a spill, man. I broke my arm pretty bad, yeah. And I did just said it, and I got to go back in a couple of days and get it fixed. I said, yeah, pretty, pretty rough, huh? And I showed him the scars in my arm where I had a, I had a, a both bone fracture. Uh, it was, it comes out with bone that came up my arm and stuff. It was pretty bad. And uh, so I know it's like having that thing sit there. If you sneeze, you breathe, or anything, you feel like somebody's got your arm in your body, and it hurts bad. So I knew he was in pain. So I said, hey, man, I know how to fix that. <laughs> he said, what? I said, I know how to fix that. He said, what, what do you mean? I said, well, hey, I know it might sound funny, but I know Jesus. Amen. And he lives in me. Oh, and he said, oh. I said, no, 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 it ain't funny like that, dude. I'm serious. He'll fix your arm. And he said, oh, I don't know about that. I said, well, I'll do. What do you got to lose, bro? Let me pray for you and see what happens. He said, okay. He looked at his wife like, oh, this dude's freaking me out. He said, oh, wait, I'm not wrong. Come on, man. You might have to hit my, hit my slack. <laughs> so I, I reached over there and I put my hand on his shoulder, not his arm. Put my hand on his shoulder. And I commanded the bones to mend together. Now listen, I'm just going to give you a little bit of something when you pray, okay? Keep, when you minister to people in public, keep your ministry down low. Keep it real down low and keep it real fast. Yes. Yep. Do not make a scene and don't take forever to see what you got to say. That's right. That's right. They ain't in church, bro. They, they, these people want to get out your, you know, they, they don't, they're uncomfortable already. Right. So yes. keep it real short and sweet. Yeah. And I, I imagine all you got to do is say, be healed in Jesus' name. Yes. You ain't got to preach a sermon. That's right. That's right. Just giving you a heads up. <laughs> when we come to the altars, when you got 15, 20, 30 people, that might, might be all right. But when you got 100 or 20 to 200 people to pray for, taking 10 minutes per person to pray, dude, that gets old. <laughs> heal, 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 heal. <laughs> anoint the napkin. Heal, heal, heal. Because you'll lose your voice. Trust me, I know. So, anyway, I'm in Walmart. 
And then I'll put my hand on them and say, in the name of Jesus, I command these bones to be mended, be healed, set back in place, and the pain to go. And then I said, now, this is what I want you to do, man. I want you to try to move it. He's like, no, bro, I ain't doing that. I said, no, 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 I mean, I'm like crazy. Just kind of like twist it a little bit, see if it hurts. And he said, no, man, it's going to hurt. And I just did it while I wrote it. hurt so bad. I said, no, trust me, trust me. Do it. So he moved it, and he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He moved it again, and he moved it again, and he said, oh, boy. I said, it hurts a little bit still. He said, yeah. I said, well, it's okay. Let's do it one more time, right? He was like, sure, man, come on. Put my hand on again. I said, in the name of Jesus, I told you, bone, get back together again right now. I'm paying you. Go. I said, now try it. He moved it. He said, bro. He looked at his wife. He said, man, it's working. It's working. I said, one more time. I did it one more time. And then after that, I said, that's what I want you to do. Be brave, man. Be brave. I said, take it out that sling and ready room your head and just wave it in there. He said, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, serious, man. Come on, bro. It gets better. It's moving around. He said, yeah, trust me. I'm telling you, it's healed. Bro, it's healed. <laughs> so he did it. He took it out the sling and he waved it over his hand, over his head. He was like, it's it's you! It's you! It's you! It's you! He told his wife, his wife started crying and stuff. And, Thank you. and I'm like, now let me tell you why I was able to do that. There is one who came, his name is Jesus. Amen. And I took one, I took a little, those little stuffed animals, look like a little something white, something that a dog could just eat up, you know, like a little rope animal or something. And I took it and I explained the sacrifice of the Lamb of God. With that little thing and said, innocent blood had to be shed. I, I gave him the gospel in about three, four minutes. Mm -hmm. And I said, Jesus loves you, man. That's why he healed you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It wasn't me. It's the one who lives in me. That's His right. name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he loved you and he died for you, just like I showed you, so that you could have healing in your body. But not only that, but have forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. <laughs> did you know him? <laughs> oh, did you know him? Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. So the 70, now we do that a lot. I have so much fun with that. Man, thought that man. Luke chapter 10. I brought you to 10. I, did, I guess I need to go there. Luke chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also. Now, 70 others also. Okay. I'm not going to talk about these decisions. 70 others. So these were guys who were apostles, right? So, they said two by two before his face in every city whether he would uh, himself would come. And he said to them the same thing he told the twelve. The harvest is plentiful, right? Mm -hmm. Then he told them to go out, go your way, carry the in person, but all that other stuff. And then watch what he says. He says, first eight, or I like verse seven, he says, in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they do. I like eating things that they get, especially in South Louisiana. And some of them other places I don't know too much about. But hey, eat it, alright? <clears throat> For the laborer is worthy of his hire, go not from house to house. So it didn't mean, don't, don't go, oh, I like that house better. They said, got to eat over there, they'll stay right where you are. And whatever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things that are set before you. Now I like verse, I like Luke's because see, in Matthew, he said, you will preach, then heal. And Luke, watch what he says. And Luke 9, he says, and heal the sick that are there, man. And say to them, the kingdom of God is from nigh unto you. So, so he sends out the 70, and he says, hey, watch. You want to go out there, and I want you to heal the sick. Us, Lord? We're, we're not, we're not in, your, in a circle there. We're not the 12. You, you, you sure you want to send us? Yeah. Go out there. Do it. Heal the sick. It's the same thing. You can see it anymore. It's the same thing. He's not telling them anything different. He's telling them the same thing you told the ten. You go heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Do it. So what do they do? Did they go do it? Yes. They came back. What did they come, what did they come back saying? Lord, even the demons are subject to your name. Huh. What? I bet you they were happy. Yes. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have cast out demons? I have a few. 
Now, I raise this question a lot. Because I've got, man, you should have heard, you should hear all the rebukes I get a lot. I just speak my mind. I don't know. I'm just so dumb like that. I don't know. You feel like Bobby Coyote run off the cliff. Ah, I'm not falling down until the roadrunner comes and shows him a book about gravity. And he falls. So I, I refuse to read the book of gravity, okay? Because let me go out there and do my thing, man. So, so the thing is, they rebuke me and say, man, you know, you're talking about they got tunnels on every rock. No, probably not under every rock, but I bet you there are a bunch of them. That's right. You know, I mean, come on, man, look at society. You don't tell me there's not a devil running loose? Come on, brother. Yeah. Reach it. Yeah. Come on, man. Reach it. Now, if not, I mean, look at Jesus. Every time he turned around, he was casting out demons. Yes. Every time. I mean, he couldn't do, he couldn't even preach without a devil coming in and interfering. So, where did they go? Did they go on vacation? Man? Did, is it, uh, they're all like deep in uh, the island somewhere. Go, man, man, I wish we'd have known about this back in Jesus' day. Man, we could have been here hanging out. No, they are still demonizing people today. The people are still being tormented by devils and being. I mean, it is, it is, it is bad, man. And the church, for the most part, has not, it doesn't even care about that. And then they were like, well, let's just preach the gospel to them. <laughs> let's just preach the gospel to them. Give them some water. Praise the Lord. What are we doing like that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is an effeminate church. You know, we're not an effeminate church. Yeah. We're full of power. Oh, Cast them devils out there. Yeah. Play and footsie with them. Come on. And I'm serious. <laughs> I, I remember I was at a tent, uh, a tent meeting and I just left and I was tired, man. And they called me back. Hey, you need to come back. Why? Uh, I got some dude over here. Uh, he's got some problems with some kind of entities. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we well, all there. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I think this is like, you know, your area of expertise is going to make a big level on this. Dude, okay. Uh, all right, I'm going to say something. Don't be scared, okay? Okay, so this guy's got like this thing screaming outside of his house, and they went out with his flashlights and guns and couldn't find anything, but it's still screaming at him. And not only that, but it's beating on the walls, and it's inside the house now. It's tormenting the people, hurting the people. And, and he is tormented severely and has got a devil himself. Come on. So he comes to this tent and, uh, and he's sitting there talking to me. I'm like, dude, shut up. It's serious. I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding. That's what I said. And he said, dude, that's not very preacher-like. I'm not trying to get an offer from the cat. Right. You know? <laughs> I'm trying to cast the devil out of the dude. Amen. So... I gotta get this devil out of him. So I'm like, shut up, man. What? I said, you heard me. Be quiet. Yes. And I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to that thing inside oh, you. No. Yes. And he shut up. <clears throat> and I'm after that point, you got control. So then I said, come here, man. I'm gonna cast this thing out of you. You got a devil. Well, I, I said, shut up. <laughs> You got a devil. We're gonna get this thing out of you. So I commanded the thing to come out. And some, you know, the good thing the rest of them weren't there because they would kick me out. I, you know, don't ever come back to this tent again, man. <laughs> because I get, I got pretty loud and uh, authoritative. And sometimes, like my wife will tell you, like I, I get authority, I get, I get militant. And sometimes around the house, I'm doing things, whatever, and I'm just saying things that I'm militant. And, uh, she's like, dude, you ain't got to be so mean. I'm like, I wasn't mean. I'm just being authoritative. I've been, this is not a, I'm serious. I didn't have any mean thing inside of me. Oh, yeah, you were sounding so mean. You can scare, like, scare a grizzly bear with the way you talk. And I'm like, well, oh, good. I mean, the devil's ain't coming in here. <laughs> so I command this thing to come out, and it comes out. Then I tell the guy, I say, listen, man, I want you to grab my hand and hold on for a second. I'm going to let what's inside me touch you so you get a touch of heaven, bro. Hallelujah. Huh. 
And I put my hand, he grabbed it, my hand, I grabbed his, and I started praying. And I said, God, fill it right now with what you got inside of me. That disorder of spirit just filled and touched him, God. And he started screaming. And he jerked his hand back in. He started crying out. He said, dude, what is that? What is that, man? Dude, he was trembling. He said, what, what did you do to me? What did you do to me? I said, nothing, God. It's the fire of God. Amen. It's the fire of God. I like what the, when the Mexicans and the, the Spanish, you know, the fuego de Dios. Yeah, fire. Wow. <laughs> I like that, man. And so, anyway... He began to weep and cry. And then we commanded that thing to leave him. He's never had any problem at his house again. And we've had different situations like that where people get scratches and bit bite marks on them and stuff. Uh, told you, I don't know if you got, can they handle this stuff? You guys got this? I got this. It's just real. But so is Jesus, and he's yes. more real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're not afraid. Man. That's right. Hallelujah. All right, so I want to paint this picture to you now. Because Matt said I got four hours. I said, dude, that's kind of excessive. <laughs> <laughs> four hours. So anyway, so first of all, Jesus was doing all the work by himself. And he says, guys, look, the harvest is plentiful. Man, there's so many limits. Look at all of them. There's no way I can reach them all. I need you guys to help me. That's why I've come. Amen. So he sends out the 12. And they will do the same thing that Jesus did. Amen. The same things. Yes. The same. Say that with me. They did the same. Yes. Yes. They did the same. Yes. Then he sends out the 70 others also. So you got Jesus. <laughs> plus 70. How many is that? Quick, 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 Matt. Yes, Thank you. 83. So, I, I, I can't do that. Fast. So, 83. So, so, it's 83 now. So, the 83 are out preaching the gospel, healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, and raising the dead, casting out demons. Isn't that something? And he didn't even go to the cross yet, Matt. <laughs> he didn't go to the cross yet. And this is amazing. So, then. He goes to Calvary. And when he goes to Calvary, oh man, this is amazing. He does something spectacular at Calvary. You know what he does? He reconciles the world into God. Hallelujah. That word reconcile means to restore, bring us back into right relationship, right oneness with God. And this is amazing because... See, a lot of people say that, well, you know, he came to the, he came to go to the cross. No. He came to reconcile us to the Father, but to do that, he needed to go to the cross. But when he went to Calvary, he did something spectacular. He said, in John 14, 12, he said, the works that I do, the one who believes on me, the works that I do, they will do also. And greater works than these shall they do, because I go to my Father. What? So what he was saying is, I'm going to make a way so that the agency of God that works mightily through me to cleanse the lepers, to raise the dead, to heal the sick, to preach the kingdom, and to do all these great signs, wonders, and miracles. The same agency of God that's working mightily through me will work mightily through you the yeah. same way he does through me. Hallelujah. And I'm going to do that because I'm going to make a way for you to be restored into the Father so that you might receive His Spirit. Yes. It's not about just going to heaven, folks. It's about making us children of God. Yes. The sons of the Most High. Thank you, Jesus. An heir of God. Hallelujah. Where we have an inheritance with the saints and the light. Thank it's you. amazing. Have you been to Calvary? Have you been to Calvary? Have you been washed with the blood? Yes. Yes. Have you been born again? Yes. Then you are a new creation. Amen. Amen. You have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you. Now, the Holy Spirit, you need to get up. You really need to get one then. I said, that. Why did you put that in and knock it down? So, you have the Holy Spirit. 
abiding within. Now in John chapter 15, Jesus says, if you abide in me, right? I abide in you. You're going to bear fruit, and much fruit. Not only that, but if you abide, it will remain. Yeah. Mm. Now, so who's bearing fruit? Hallelujah. Okay, we're just holding the fruit. But what's producing the fruit? You? Or what's inside you? And what's inside him? See, Jesus, oh boy, okay. Okay. He referred to himself mostly as the Son of Man. He did not deny the claims of being the Son of God. Matter of fact, sometimes he even said, yes, this is he. I am he. You, you call the Son of God? Yes, I am he. Do you believe on the Son of God? Yes, well, I am he. So, but he referred to himself as the Son of Man because he had to die as a man. He had to function as a man. His ministry was a man filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because he had to do that to be our example. Yes. So that he could show us that, man, you know what? I, I don't live by, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. God is with me. God is in me. I'm one with him, and he is one with me. Hallelujah. That's what he said in John 14. Being the Father, we're one. And then in John 17, he says, you'll be the same like us. We'll be one with you. Yes. One with God. One with God. Hallelujah. So, and he referred to himself as the Son of Man. Filled with the Holy Spirit. So it was God doing the works through Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. He was just a vessel. Yes. It was. Was he deity? Oh, yes, absolutely. I'm not going to deny his deity. <coughs> you crazy? I'm not a heretic. That's right. <laughs> no. But he did, but what he did was he, he did not express it. Yes. He never lost it, but never expressed it. Mm. <sighs> and he humbled himself. As a man. Yes. And let God do the works through him. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord. The same thing happens for us, man. It's not you. It's not how, how great you walk and how much knowledge you have. It's about what you believe in. And then that, are, you, are, you, are you a believer in Jesus? Yeah. He said the criteria for doing the works that he would do is that you believe on him. Yes. He didn't say how faithful you were. <coughs> Abiding in Him, you when you abide in Him, you, you realize you're going to make mistakes? Yes. Matt, have you made some mistakes? Yes, sir. Are you still in Christ? Yes. May I save you? <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. So can, can God use that? Yes. Can God use you? Yes. Because yes. yes. God wanted to use you, that's the yes. point. Yes. yes. But let's prove it, okay? Let's let every devil in the house know. Hallelujah. Watch this. So in Mark, or Matthew, Matthew, I love Matthew. Matthew 28. Let's go there real quick. How much time? Like, how much time do I really have? Yeah. As much as you need. Because the clock is broken. <laughs> yeah. Are you all right? Amen. Yes. You're all right. Amen. That's sometimes I got to ask. Because I'll get up. I'll keep you here for 10 hours, man. Huh? I promise. Amen. I'm not kidding. And then, and then I'll do a little date break and we'll come back for another 10. <laughs> Say, I'm hungry. Eat the word, bro. It's <laughs> 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 a great life, man. Yeah, man. Okay, so Matthew 28, verse 18. Jesus came and spoke to his disciples after his, after his, uh, his resurrection from the dead. And before he ascends into heaven, he gives his last will and statement, right? He said, hey, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want you to do. Watch what he says. So he says, All power is given unto me in heaven and on or and in earth. Now, how much power? Oh. So that's one of the words, right? So if Jesus has all power, who else has some? We do. Okay, so no, wait, listen. If Jesus has all power, who else has some? We do. We do. We do. Let me ask him one more time. Oh, God. If Jesus has all power, he has some. He's the only one. All power is his. Now, does he give it to us? No, not necessarily. 
He authorizes us to use His power. Yes. I like that term. Because yes. He doesn't give it to you. He authorizes you to use His power. That's good. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So He gives us authority or authorization to use His name to do His works. Watch. So He says, All power is given unto me, heaven and earth. Now go. And it sounds like we told the 12 and the 70, right? Go. Yes. Go, be therefore. Into all the world, all the nations, right? Teach all nations or make disciples of all nations. Now, that's amazing to me. Go and make disciples of all nations. Oh, watch. Baptizing them in the name, we're going to do that today. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things yes. whatsoever I have commanded you. Now watch how this thing works. I need, I need three volunteers. Who wants to come out? <coughs> come on up, man. I need two more. Come on, come on. Quickly, quickly. Run, run, run. No, no, no. If you get flip flops, don't run. <laughs> you got like, prices right. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, anyway, okay, he's got a beard, so he's Jesus. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, this is Jesus, okay? <laughs> now, now, Jesus here is talking to the 12 disciples. He's giving them this commandment to the, to the church. So he says, hey, I want you to make disciples of all nations. And I want you, you can look at these. So I want <laughs> you to teach them all the stuff that I taught you, right? So that's what he's saying. So watch this. What did he, say? What did he teach her? Or what did he teach the 12? What did he tell them to do? Go. <laughs> Go. Right? So that's what he taught them, right? Yes. So he says, um, and then, so I need you to go make disciples and teach them Same. what he taught you. Amen. Go, as I mean, go to sick, raise the dead, preach the gospel to all nations. In his name. See? Yes. And this one? That's fine. So did it just stop right there? No. Or did it come all the way over there? church. You go and do the works. You tell them and you teach them to observe all things I commanded you to do. I didn't tell you it was an idea that maybe you might want to cast out the devil. I told you to cast them out. Amen. Amen. Don't let them sit there and bother people. Cast them out. Well, I don't know how. It's not up to you to know how. Just do what I say. Hallelujah. How many of you got some moms? Some moms. Huh? How many of you got a mom? <laughs> Maybe not mama's plural. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> so, you got your mama. So, your mama would tell you, I want you to go clean your room, do this, do that. But I don't know how. I don't tell you this. You go do what I told you to do. That's right. So, don't try to feed your mama. She knows you know how to do it. And if you don't, you better do it. You better do it. An effort, at least. Isn't that right, mama? <laughs> I got a witness in the house. <laughs> so, now watch. Mark's gospel. Mark 16. Jesus says in his, in his disciples, another thing, another version, same time, before he ascends. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. This is verse 15. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, what? Did he, what did he say? What was that? What? Somebody, 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 huh? What? What did he say? These signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them. Well, I don't believe in signs and so, what? Really? Didn't Jesus, did, did, did Jesus just say, signs are going to follow you? That's right. When, when are you guys going to believe that? When are you going to believe that signs will follow you? <laughs> Do signs follow you? Come on, brother. Yes. No, I didn't say sirens. <laughs> I said signs. Amen. I, I, I was horse the other day. My wife said they're going to get some 
some ball of shrimp and some potatoes. And they, and they, they have this little thing, they have sweet potato too. They do ball of sweet potato. I don't know if you have done that. Either. So I can hardly talk. And potatoes. <laughs> so I said, I need six potatoes and a sweet potato. Can you repeat my order? And she repeated it back and she left off my potatoes. I said, what about, what about my six potatoes? All that in there? I said, you got my six potatoes, but you didn't save my six potatoes. Oh, it's in there. Oh, okay. So I get to the window and I pay. I said, hey, can she repeat the order again? I said, but you didn't say six potatoes. Oh, it's in there. Okay. <laughs> and I'm not about to open up that bag of shrimp, you know, in my truck going home. But I had a sneaky suspicion <laughs> that my six potatoes wasn't in the bag. <laughs> I get home, I call her on the way home. I said, baby, I think they messed up my order. I don't think they put my six potatoes in there. I'm sure they didn't. <laughs> she didn't say it. Man, I'm not going to be happy. I get home and I don't got my six potatoes. I get home and my six potatoes went in the bag. Then that's something. I guess she thought I said sweet potatoes. And my wife said, she thought I told you something about sweet potatoes. <laughs> and why does she keep saying sweet potatoes all the time? Sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes, sweet potatoes. It's in the bag. What's the number of sweet potatoes? It's in the bag. <laughs> so, that woman might have had a hard time hearing it. Again. But I'm pretty sure Jesus was clear. Amen. Signs will follow them that believe. Hallelujah. Now, whether you believe that or not, oh, does it change the word of God? That's right. Amen. Okay. Now, I'm going to promise you something here in a little bit. Things are going to get pretty wild. Are y'all going to be all right with that? No. Okay. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. They don't mean you go around picking up snakes. No, sir. No. I'll get into that a little bit And they shall not hurt. Uh, if you drink any deadly thing, you shall not hurt them. And, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall yeah. recover. Amen. Now watch. And so after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. That means the work was finished. He's already given the commandment, and he sat down, and now he expects the church to go do what he said. Hallelujah. <laughs> now watch. And they went forth, who? The ones he spoke to. And preached everywhere. And the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Yes. If we go and move, God will move with us and he will do what he said he would do. Yes. But we must do what he said. Yes. Years ago, I was walking, and I got a revelation from the Lord. I was praying. And I was praying for people, some people uh, to be saved and whatnot. And how many times have you been praying for something, and you're so like, man, and you're like, you're just heavy in a prayer. And the Lord just pops up with this question from the blue. I'm like, what? Is that what So he says, hey. I said, yes, Lord. You know, all the reverend, oh, yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> he said, have you, ha, have you read John 14, 12? And I said, I read John many times. So, yeah, but what, bring, uh, it didn't ring a bell, that, that, that address didn't ring a bell. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure I did. Plenty of times, I read John many, many times. Yeah, yeah. Do you believe it? I said, well, before I say yes, I know how you are with a tricky question. <laughs> Let me go read it first. <laughs> So I went and read it. And I said, yeah, yeah, I believe it. He said, well, is it true in your life? I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> you tell me. You're the Lord, you know. He said, read it again and tell me if it's true in your life. Shall I read it to you? Yeah, yes. read it again, 
I'm going to read it so you don't think I'm making it up. You got one, you got it on the screen there, right? No. No? Oh, it's on there now. Okay. So John 14, 12. He says that whosoever, actually he was talking about if you don't believe that I'm in the Father and the Father is in me, then I'm leaving for the work's sake, right? Because the Father does the work. And then, he's, then he winds up saying this. He says, for I'm going to tell you the truth. Isn't that 14, 12? Very, very, I say unto you, right? Is that what it says in there? Yes. I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, right? Is that what it says? Yes. The works that I do, he shall do also, or shall he do also. Now let me give you something here. The church people have said in the church a long time ago, oh, talking about he, doing, we're talking about the, it's the church, the church, the church is going to do great works. No, 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 no. That word there is in the third person singular. That means whosoever. That's right. He's talking to his disciples and he said, hey, look, the time's coming that whosoever's going to believe on me, Matt, that person. So it's not saying the church collectively. No, no. The person, one individual who believes on me. Whoever believes on me. How many believers we got in the house? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Talking to you. So watch this. Watch this. It says, the works that I do. What's the works? Oh, immediately. Oh, they heal the sick ones, the lepers raise the dead. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's the works. Well, what about loving? Yeah. What about compassion? Yes. Um, what about receiving persecution without offering reviling words back? Yes. What about just taking your licks, man? What about walking in humility? What about walking in the fear of the Lord? What about walking in purity? Yes. What about walking without fear in the midst of a perverse and crooked generation? Huh? Yes. What about what about facing your persecutors or walking in the midst of danger and not worrying about your own life? Amen. Having total confidence in God, total trust in God. So much so that you don't even care where you're going to sleep tonight because it doesn't matter. God's going to take care of you. Hallelujah. And if he doesn't, so what? He loves me anyway. Yes. And I love him. And maybe I need to be out in the wilderness so that I get to look into the stars and see how great and good he is. And I can just worship him all night long. Yes. What about, what about, oh, I need my 12 hours of sleep or I ain't no good tomorrow. So you mean he can't wake you up in the middle of the night and have you pray all night long? Oh, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Did he do that? Are you greater than your master? Oh, Jesus. Huh. Well, watch this. It says not only is the, is the servant not greater than his master, but watch, it says, but it's not something unusual for a servant to be like his master. Oh. So with the Holy Ghost, we can be like Jesus. And he says, not only will you do the works that I do, but you'll do greater works than these. What's that mean? Do you know that people didn't get born again in Jesus' ministry? People did not get the Holy Spirit dwelling in them, living in them until after the cross. Until he ascended on high and sent the Holy Spirit down. After that, then we became like him. Yes. Yes. Do you get it? Yes. It's not. And Paul said in Philippians, have this mind in you which was in Christ Jesus. He didn't think it robbery to be equal with God. Neither should you. Yes. Yes. You're his son and daughter. Wow. And you have his spirit. Yes. You, didn't get, you didn't get where you are because you did something good. He put his spirit inside you and he made you a new creation. Yeah. He made you a, a habitation of his spirit. Yeah. You? Yeah. It's him. Huh. Yeah. So when are we going to wake up, church, and believe that we are what he said we are? Yeah. When are we going to wake up and start saying, man, you know what? I am full of God. Amen. Yeah. I am a child of God. I can cast out demons. I can heal the sick. I can cleanse the lepers. I can raise the dead. Not by my power, but by His Spirit 
This world is inside me. Yeah. It's his power, his authority. Yeah. It's all his. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not mine. He chose me. I did not choose him. Are y'all all right? Yes. Are y'all hungry? Yes. I'm not talking about food. But you know what? I've changed my, I want to change my vocabulary. I want you to change yours. We're no longer thirsty for God. We're no longer hungry for God. To be thirsty and hungry for God is to deny the word of God, which says that, that he's the bread of life. And if you eat of him, you'll never want, you'll never hunger and thirst again. And he said that, that if you're drinking the water that he gives, you'll never thirst. So if you're thirsty, maybe you never drink. Oh. And if you don't have it, maybe you didn't ever be taken the bread of life yet. So I'm asking you, are you hungry or are you thirsty? You should say, no, I'm full. Thank you. But I want more. But I want some zeal. I want some zeal for God. I want God to move mightily through me. I want to so I want, I want when somebody touches me for them to get ow, shocked yes. by the power of God. Yes. Like when I put my hand on that fellow and he started, he pulled his hand back. What is that? Yes. That fire. The lightning bolt of God. Oh, just poof. Power. It's the power that created the heavens and the earth and the, and the bodies inside you. And you need to realize that it's not a funny thing to think that yourself, that, that you are so full of God that you can do these things. Come on. You know what it is? You say, you know what false humility is? Let me tell you what false humility is. False humility is to think that you're not worthy of God to use you when he called you worthy. You know? Hallelujah. That's false humility. And that's a sin, friend. God called you holy and clean and he put his spirit inside you and he expects you to do good work. Don't you ever, ever tell him that he did not do a good job in you. Oh, 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 oh. You all right? Yes. <laughs> it's sin. And you wonder why God can't use you. You still haven't believed that you've been washed in the blood and made holy and righteous in his sight. Unblameable. Glory to God. Let's get that worship team. All right. <laughs> Let's do some importation this morning, shall we? Yes. Now, if you're on the worship team and you want something, you ain't got to get up here and sing or play guitar or whatever. I'm pretty sure we got to see you being play. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask one more time. Are you all right? Because <laughs> it's about to get crazy. Right now. In a good way. Turn toward God, be reverent. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. <coughs> the Holy Spirit is still in this place with His presence. Yeah, yeah. I saw before Matt called me, he texted me, brother. I don't think we call him anymore. No. Mm. I guess we do sometimes. I saw myself preaching here. And I thought it kind of strange. I said, wow, well, maybe I guess I'll be preaching that one these days again. The next morning, Matt sent me a text and says, hey, I know it's last minute, but you, would you mind coming and preach for me? Sunday the 29th. I didn't have to think about it. I knew right away. And when I was, when I saw myself ministering up here, it wasn't so much about what I was going to preach. But what was going to take place at the altars up here? I saw some of you, the chains that we sung that song a while ago, chains are falling. Some of you are going to have your chains finally broken today. Some of you have been waiting to be healed from God. You, you've been asking and believing and trusting and, and you, you've gotten so to the place where you're like, you're okay with it. Don't be okay with it. God died. Jesus died on the cross to get rid of it. 
Some of you are going to be healed finally. Some of you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And you've been, and you, you, you're walking around and you're seeing everybody else praying in tongues in you. And you're wondering why I can't do it yet. I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit yet. I want that. It's time to get filled. Some of you are trapped in a cycle of sin. And it's nothing really major in you. You get victory over it, but you always seem to come back around. And you can't seem to win. <laughs> I'm not going to promise you that I'll put my hand on you and it's going to go, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something real quick. The faith you need is nothing more than what you believe to be saved. That's all. You have to have confidence in God, trust in God that what He did inside you, he, he will work and He'll do it for you. And you'll be able to live in purity. You'll be able to do the right things. And you'll be able to live right and holy and righteous in His sight. Without trying so hard. But I know that there's going to be a point. It's like when you come and you receive prayer. And God will touch you and give you a revelation. And He'll let you know that He's heard you. And now He's working with you. See, sometimes we just got to have a touch from God. Yes. I understand that. There's been times when I've been walking, I say, God, I just need you to hold me right now. I don't know how to pray. I've been praying in the spirit. But God, sometimes I just need a touch. I know that I don't need to have it because I live by faith. But sometimes, God, it would be just nice if you just reached down from heaven and touched me. And he does. He knows what you need. Amen? So whatever you got, come on. I want everybody, you raise your hand, you need healing in your body. First of all, we need you to come home. We're going to pray for your healing this morning. I want you to come up here believe to be healed. If you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you come on up. If you're hungry and want a zeal for God, whatever it is that you need, I want you to come up. Don't hesitate. Don't think about it too long. You know you 